So I'm tearing down my now 42 year old motor that came out of my CB750 Cafe Racer project. Now, before I acquired this bike, I know it already has been through a lot of abuse. It barely ran when I bought it, but it did run. I wanted to do a whole teardown and refresh on the engine before it goes back into the bike. And I want to check and see the wear on the cylinder boards. And from there, I can see whether or not I want to go to the machine shop. And to check that bore, I need an Eastwood dial type cylinder bore gauge kit. This will measure a cylinder anywhere from two inches to six inches. And this guy comes with 12 different pins in order to measure those different ranges of bores. It also comes with a couple of different size shims in order to fine tune your diameter a little bit better. So diving into what we have here, the bore on these specific cylinders is small. Little baby motorcycle engine. These are supposed to be 62 millimeters, which converted into freedom units for you guys is 2.44 inches. So to start off here, we're gonna grab our outside micrometer and zero this thing out to 2.44 inches, and then we could get to it. All right, so our outside micrometer here, this one goes from two to three inches and measures down with foul, so get this bad boy dialed in. There is 2.4, let's go to 2.450, which is right there. And then we'll just take 10 out, and there you go. There is 2.440. Let's go ahead and get our bore gauge in here and get it zeroed out. Now what you wanna do is go through the combination of pins and shims and come up with the right one that's gonna fit in that micrometer so you could zero it out. I already know exactly which ones we need. Now in order to change the pins, I'm gonna remove this guy here. And you can see it comes with a pin already in there. And what we're gonna need is this guy right here and this shim. Just gonna put it on there like that. Flip it in and then reinstall. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put our bore gauge into the micrometer. Now when I do that, you see that that needle swings over to that point right there. And if I give it a little bit of a wiggle, you can see pretty much where it wants to sit. Now what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna try to hold this in the micrometer as I do it, is I'm gonna loosen this thumb, thumb screw and then when you loosen that, you can spin this bezel around and you just wanna put zero under the needle. Give it a little bit of a wiggle, make sure it's centered up. That looks about right to me. And then you can tighten back down that thumb screw and this thing is zeroed out. And if I take it out of the micrometer, you'll see that that needle jumps back up to zero. But once we're at 2.44 inches, we'll be pretty much at zero right there all set so now we're ready to go let's get some measurements going here i'm gonna just drop this in really that simple to see what you got now there is a little bit of a process when you're doing this you want to take your measurements top middle and bottom we also want to make sure that the direction of this is oriented with the thrust side of your bore that's where most of the wear is going to be happening and then once you get all those measurements you could turn this 90 degrees and do the same thing top middle and bottom so let's start let's get this oriented with the thrust side of the cylinder which is that way so the top has a little bit of carbon build up there you can see that it's a little bit past zero by the way this way is going to be tighter this way is going to be loosening so if you move down, you can see that loosens up a little bit. There's the middle right there, spot on. Let's hit the bottom. Spot on. Perfect. Honda build quality, right? So that cylinder looks good. At this point, you'd write down your measurements, do a 90, take measurements from that direction as well, which I'll go ahead and do. Let's see what that looks like. Top looks good. Spot on, spot on. Wow, 42 years later, exactly in spec. What can I say? So write that down and then continue for the other three cylinders, which I'm gonna go ahead and do right now.
Right on. Last one looks just as good. So again, after 42 years, really no loss of measurement in these cylinders at all. Looks good, other than being a little bit dirty, needs a little bit of a cleanup. And hey, once that's done, I might even send it to the machine shop. Anyways, but back to the board tool. Couple of other things I didn't mention here. Obviously, you get a nice legible black and white gauge up here, but you also get some min max rings. You can adjust those and slide them around where you want your min and your max to be. Or if you wanted to stay within a certain range, you could set that and just make sure the needle bounces between. Nice little touch right there. Obviously, you get a nice long handle, little grip at the top as well. Great for reaching into those deep cylinder bores. And also, one thing I didn't mention in the kit, you do get an extension in there as well. So you can really do those big blocks, those really wide six inch cylinders with the right setup of shims, pins, and that extension right there. All good to have. And on top of that, you get that nice blow molded carrying case as well, which keeps everything nice and organized when you're done. Pretty neat little tool, very accurate, comes at a budget friendly price tag as well. And it's even backed with a one year warranty from Eastwood. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're giving away a MiG-180 welder at 500,000 subscribers. Also, make sure you check out our channel as well. We have tons of great how-to content over there you're definitely going to want to see. We'll have the cylinder bore gauge tool linked below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm JD. Make sure you keep it right here at Eastwood to do the job right.